Okay, today we're gonna to talk about running the salient object detection model on a mobile device. We're gonna use this U-squared net model because they have a light version that's only 4.7 megabytes. This model finds the most salient or the most noticeable or important object in an image. Here is a little copy and paste demo I made with it, and here is me attempting to run it in real time with a distortion shader. So in the last video, we ran an Onyx model in Unity with Barracuda. And it was a little complicated to get the right inputs and outputs, even for a simple classification model. So today we're going to go through the process of converting this saliency model from PyTorch to Onyx, and then running it in Snapchat's Lens Studio with SnapML. They make it super easy to deal with inputs and outputs. Even I was able to figure it out and I don't know anything about Lens Studio or machine learning for that matter. So yeah, let's look into that process. I'm sure you've seen this copy and paste app with Photoshop by Cyril. I always thought this was incredible. And when you look at his GitHub, it looks like he was using this ML model called Baznet for removing the background of objects in the camera image. Well, the same people came out with a new model called U squared net. This model has a light version that's really small and I thought maybe we could run this on a mobile device. What immediately comes to mind with this model is Star Wars holographic video. So if it runs fast enough, this might be possible. Anyway, let's download this U squared net GitHub repo and the pre-trained weights and test it out. In the readme, you can see all the required libraries. So I made a new Anaconda environment and I installed all the proper dependencies. So now I can activate the environment and open U2net test.py and let's change the model name to U2net P and run that test. If we go to test data and test images, we can see that the input images are all three channel RGB images. If we go to YouTube net results, we can see the output of the model is also an image, but these are all single channel black and white images that are masks of the most salient object. So the model takes an image as an input and outputs an image mask. Sick. Now this model is using PyTorch, so the pre-trained model is a PTH file. We need it in Onyx format. So luckily SnapML already has some sample conversion code. Let's use that as a starting point and fill out what we need. So this code won't run with the recommended PyTorch version that we have, so we have to upgrade. Now we're going to load the U2Net P model because that is the small one. The test input is a three channel image with dimensions of 320 and we have to make sure to use offset 11. Now run this conversion script and you can see that we get an Onyx model file. If we open this in Netron, you can see the input and output tensor sizes. Let's drag this into Lens Studio and hook everything up. Uh, what? So here's where things get a little bit hairy. So the error says the upsample layer must specify resizing scale and height. So when I look at the model, it uses this function for upsampling, which takes the previous tensor size and upsamples to the desired tensor size. This took me a while to figure out, but Lens Studio seems to want a constant upsample factor. So I printed out the tensor size of what was going in and out of that function call, and they all used a factor of two. So this might be common ML knowledge, but I have no idea what I'm doing here. And so this was news to me. The other thing I noticed in the conversion example was they were talking about setting align corners to true or using a nearest neighbor interpolation for like the best compatibility in regards to upsampling. So I changed the upsample function to interpolate and set the mode to nearest. And I replaced all of the instances of that function call with this hard coded scale factor. And that seemed to do the trick. The last thing I did was this model was outputting like seven different images that got normalized into one. But when I check each one of them, they all look the same. So I just removed them and I only had the model output one image. This is probably a terrible idea, but it was much easier to work with in Lens Studio. And I don't know, it seems fine. Finally, I reconverted the model to Onyx format and now it successfully imports into Lens Studio with perfect compatibility across the board. Now for the input scale, we need to see what format the model wants the pixels in. So if you go to the test script back in Python, uh, you can see that the object data gets loaded with a rescale function to 320. So note that it does not crop the image, it only gets scaled. And then it uses this to TensorLab function, which looks like it normalizes the pixels to zero to one. So when the output gets saved, you can see they multiply the pixels back to range zero to 255. So back in Lens Studio, this means that we need to multiply the input by one over 255 or 0 0.0039. The stretch option should be checked and then the output should be multiplied by 255. So let's just hook this up to an image and just run it in real time for the sake of this tutorial. Just know this doesn't run very well in real time. You probably wanna use this only like one shot at a time in practice. Anyway, um, let's first delete the lighting. Uh, we'll just use an unlit shader for this process and we'll add a new screen image. Set the stretch mode to stretch, add a new unlit material and add that to the image. On the camera, add an ML component and drag in the model. Check auto build, uh, add the device camera texture to the input and create an output texture. Now back to the material we just created, change the blend mode to normal, change the base color to something bright 
and then add the device camera texture as the base texture and the prediction texture as the opacity texture. And now we can see it running in real time. It's insane how actually easy this is. And now you can just click send lens to device and run it on a phone. That's nuts. So now, like I said, this does not run well in real time, at least on my iPhone 8. So I made a little GitHub project for you guys that uses this model to do copy and paste in Lens Studio. Uh, you just click the screen once to copy the object, and then it gets childed to the camera. So you just move the phone around, and then you click again to place it. This does not work great because I did not get the 3D position of the object or the real scale or anything. I'm just literally copying the entire image and placing it at a fixed distance from the camera. So maybe we could take this further in another video if you want. Um, but anyway, I put the link to that project down in the description below. Ironically, when I was working on this project, I saw that Jameson Tool, the CTO of Fritz Labs, was using Lens Studio to do almost the exact same thing. So he just posted this tutorial a few days ago where he makes a much better copy and paste lens. He uses his own ML model for this, which has a similar architecture to what we used here. And his lens also allows you to place copies in 2D space as well as 3D space. So I'll link to that in the description as well. Definitely check out his tutorial as well as all the other articles on that site. They are super interesting. So I ended up sending him a DM after I saw his copy and paste demo because I felt like a total piece of shit. I was like doing the exact same thing that he was doing, but he ended up being like super cool and he was like really encouraging. So I cannot say enough nice things about the guy. That's all I got for today, um, but I do, I do really like this particular model and I'd like to do more stuff with it in the future. I think what would be a really interesting idea would be now getting this model to run in Unity with Barracuda and then kind of like pitting both models against each other and seeing what runs faster, Unity or SnapML. I have a feeling that SnapML is doing a ton of performance stuff behind the scenes, but I think that'd be like a really interesting test. Anyway, um, let me know what you guys want to see in the comments down below in the next video. And with that, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.